Now, India is a country infamous for its scorching heat and humidity. For me, the only relief from this heat is to drink plenty of water. Now, while in India, my parents always remind me to only drink boiled or bottled water, because unlike here in America, where I can just turn on a tap and easily get clean potable water, in India the water is often contaminated. However, I soon realized that not everyone is fortunate enough to enjoy the clean water we did. Outside my grandparents' house in the busy streets of India, I saw people standing in long lines under the hot sun, filling buckets with water from a tap. This unacceptable social injustice compelled me to want to find a solution to our world's clean water problem. I used to think the whole purpose of life was pursuing happiness. Everyone said the path to happiness was success, so I searched for that ideal job, that perfect boyfriend, that beautiful apartment. But instead of ever feeling fulfilled, I felt anxious and adrift. And I wasn't alone. My friends, they struggled with this too. Eventually, I decided to go to graduate school for positive psychology to learn what truly makes people happy. The data showed that chasing happiness can make people unhappy. The suicide rate has been rising around the world, and it recently reached a 30-year high in America. Even though life is getting objectively better by nearly every conceivable standard, more people feel hopeless, depressed, and alone. And according to the research, what predicts this despair is not a lack of happiness; it's a lack of something else. As a kindergarten teacher might say, sharing is caring. She might not mention that cooperation is also a great way to form a community and thus improve everyone's chances of survival. Humans aren't the only ones to apply this strategy. Maroon bacteria also form cooperative populations, according to a study in the journal Science. Researchers examined the genomes of bacteria belonging to the Vibrionaceae family. In the lab, they grouped together bacteria with similar genetics that coexist in the same microhabitat. The scientists expected that within any given population, individuals capable of producing antibiotics would use these chemical weapons against others. But when they looked at interactions between different strains of Vibrionaceae, they found that only a few members of any given population could produce the bacteria-killing substances. We are going to discuss mitosis. Mitosis is a process of cell division. As a result of cell division, two daughter cells are produced from a single parent cell. The daughter cells are identical to one another and to the original parent cell. Mitosis includes four phases called prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Let's discuss each phase here. 
In prophase, each chromosome duplicates to form two sister chromatids. In metaphase, the chromosomes line up at the equatorial plate and are held by microtubules and the centromere. In anaphase, the centromeres divide and sister chromatids separate and move toward the matching poles. Finally, in telophase, daughter chromosomes arrive at the poles and the microtubules disappear. The chromatin expands. The cytoplasm divides and the cell membrane pinches inward, producing two daughter cells. So today I'm going to talk about the key things you need to remember when you go out into the world as translators. The first thing is to be choosy about what commissions you accept. It's not advisable to agree to do every job you're offered, even if you're in need of work. You should refuse to do something if you don't know anything about the topic, as it would be impossible for you to produce a good piece of writing. And it could be serious. A mistranslation that's going to be used for medical or legal purposes could have disastrous consequences. Having decided you can reasonably take on a commission, if you have the slightest doubt about what something means, then consult a dictionary or someone whose mother tongue is the language you're translating from. It's much better to devote a bit of time and effort to checking something than to risk making a potentially serious error. Now, one of the workplace models I want to look at today is telecommuting. Done properly, telecommuting makes good business sense and companies can make huge savings on their overheads. It can also be a very effective to recruit quality employees, but companies need to plan ahead and create the right culture for it to work. Management needs to look at training, security and communication issues before any kind of telecommuting agreement is entered into. Now, a key part of making it work is ensuring that every employee, and that's whether they're at home or in the office, has equal access to resources and, of course, promotions. The last thing you want is to create a kind of us versus them scenario. To be honest, the biggest problem for most undergraduate students in terms of academic writing is not only adapting to a far more structured and formal style, but also learning how to ascertain the difference between important, valid information and unnecessary or even irrelevant material. In my experience, I would say it takes students their first year, if not longer, to appreciate what is required and to start to implement those requirements in their writing. What they really should be doing if they are struggling with written assignments is to seek help from the excellent support services which are available at the university.
If you like the colorful animals we just saw, you're going to love these next animals, frogs. You might not normally think of frogs as being colorful, but these frogs definitely are. They are the dart poison frogs of Central and South America. Look at their striking colors, often yellow with black stripes or deep blue with black spots. Beyond being nice to look at, these markings have a purpose. They warn predators that these frogs are poisonous. When threatened, these frogs secrete a substance through their skin that would easily kill whatever animal might try to eat them. Their bright colors communicate this, and so most animals tend not to hunt them. Laughter is one of the greatest therapies in combating adversity, and whole communities and nations have frequently relied on humor to get them through their bleakest times. On August 13, 1961, the barbed wire was rolled out of Berlin to create the Berlin Wall. For nearly 30 years, until it was dismantled, wall jokes proliferated, especially among those living in the East. Laughing was all that was left. Jokes about those who rule you, and sometimes those who tyrannize you, are a form of folklore that has existed in societies as seemingly different as communist Eastern Europe, Russia, modern Egypt, 12th century Persia, and modern-day Iran. Humor also be wonderfully subversive. It can protect self-respect and identity. The Roman Colosseum is the most famous monument to have survived from the classical world. It was built nearly 2,000 years ago for the purpose of hosting violent gladiator games. Thousands of men and animals fought for their lives in the sandy arena. The powerful associations and images evoked by the Roman Colosseum express both the majesty and might of the Roman Empire. It dominates the space it occupies, towering above the surrounding Roman streets and buildings and remains one of Rome's top visited tourist attractions. It is a symbol of the imperial might and architectural ingenuity of the Roman Empire that dominated the ancient Mediterranean world for centuries. Sometime prior to the autumn of 1803, the Englishman John Dalton was able to explain the results of some of his studies by assuming that matter is composed of atoms and that all samples of any given compound consist of the same combination of these atoms. Dalton also noted that in series of compounds, the ratios of the masses of the second element that combine with the given weight of the first element can be reduced to small whole numbers. That is precisely the law of multiple proportions. This was further evidence for atoms. Dalton's theory of atoms was published by Thomas Thomson in the third edition of his System of Chemistry in 1807. 
Dalton published his ideas himself the following year in the new system of chemical philosophy. The Earth-observing satellites have been around for about three decades, yet most of the imagery they apprehend has not been high enough resolution to anticipate the very small agricultural fields regular in developing countries. Currently, however, satellites have shrunk in both size and cost while concurrently improving in resolution, and today there are various companies competing to launch refrigerator and shoebox sized satellites into space that shall capture high resolution pictures of Earth. One can get lots of them up there, all capturing very tiny parts of the land surface at very high resolution. Any one satellite does not give you very much information, but the group of them actually means that you are screening most of the world at very high resolution and at much lower price. That is something we never really had even a couple years ago.